So guess where I am? The burying point here in Salem, Massachusetts, one of Salem's many cemeteries. Now I told you I'd be back in Salem and I always keep my promises, but I came today for a very specific purpose, an aromatic purpose. It's all about the dramatic opening, you know? <laughs> so August, Monday 28th, and here I am. I've been anticipating this day for so long. I am in the Witch City Wix, relatively brand new shop here in Salem, Massachusetts, located on Essex Street, which is really uh, the hot spot for everything festive and Halloween related all year round. As you can see, Liz and her staff have gone all out. So Liz, the last time I saw you, we were in a cemetery. You take all your favorite baking spices that are in your cabinet, you put them all together. We were, <laughs> were evaluating candles like goofballs using uh, a cell phone to record us, and here I come visit you today, and I see this amazing, beautiful shop with such a wonderful aesthetic. What was the process of getting the shop and designing it? Well, the shop sort of fell in my lap, just like a lot of opportunities that have happened over the past few years with yeah. Witch City Wicks. We got the lease in April, we were open by May 15th. The idea of owning a shop was sort of a pie in the sky idea. It was sort of like, oh, maybe someday, maybe someday we'll open a shop. But now we're here, it's nice. As soon as I walked in, this cacophony, images just rolling through my head from all of the different fragrances that are in the room. Well, hopefully it's a pleasant and not a smack you in the face smell no, when you walk through the no, door like some candle shops. No, definitely not that experience at all. It's almost like walking into a library, all the potential stories that are just waiting to be, to be told. Alfred Hitchcock would always say that he'd be happy if he got 80% of what he was hoping for. If you don't mind, talk a little bit about the process of creating the concept. What's the source of inspiration? I know it can come from multiple places, but is it more like a nostalgia that you're trying to tap into? Or is it trying to bring you to a place that you've never been before? It can either be like the fragrance can dictate what the candle is going to be, or a certain graphic or image will dictate how it goes and then I try to marry the right fragrance to that idea. Would you say that your candles are stories? I think some of them can have a story behind them. Uh, it's funny you mention that because I'm sort of working on some new ideas and thinking of the next iteration of candles, it would be kind of cool to have a matching story with the candle. Sometimes books and candles can go together. Right, right. When you're creating a fragrance, is it is it emotional or is it literal? If, you, if I were to say, I want, I, want, I want a candle called Scarecrow, it, would your process be more literal? Like, okay, well, Scarecrow wood, and we got the corn husks, and we got like the dirty rags, or is it more of an emotional portrait? Um, it would definitely, I would probably go more of the experience. To me, a scarecrow is more, I identify more fall-like yeah. smells with that, so I would probably think more straw, hay, so it would be more of an experience, not just a literal, like, here's a grass candle. Right, And I'm right. gonna call it scarecrow. <laughs> but would you take any liberties as far as you know what, let's get a little bit of like nutmeg in there. Let's Absolutely. get- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because again, to me, if I identify with Scarecrow as a fall type thing, I would definitely want it to be a little fall-like. And it's, I feel like nutmeg, cinnamon, those yeah. types of spices are definitely identified with fall. You know, I make a Viking candle and I'm in my men's collection. And so it's always a big joke when people pick it up because they don't expect the smell that they're getting from it. They expect it to smell like big, dirty, you know, barbarians. And my candle's a very 
clean fragrance. It smells like juniper berries and salt water because to me, I wanted more of a romantic aspect of the Viking candle is what would it be like when they're casting off from shore? What would they smell as they hit the ocean? That's what I mean. I'm always trying to say a candle's a story. What you're telling me is a story. You're going step by step the experience, not just what they would be smelling taking off on the ship, but you know, leaving home and mm -hmm. the adventurous feeling of, of, of the great wide open and... Uh, and conquering lands. Conquering <laughs> lands. And con the voyager, right? How do you experience the aroma? Do you, do you see visuals? Is it more of a visceral experience? From the candle making aspect, it's more of, think of all the prospects of what it could become. Then I get like, ooh, what can I use it for? Or what can I make with this? You know, and that's how I approach my sense of smell. And for the rare few who actually attempt to make their own candles, what is the process? How do you educate yourself? How do you train your nose? Is it just trial and error and a waste yeah. of money in the beginning? It is. I mean, I can only speak from personal experience. I started out making candles in my kitchen. So is it, a pro is it a process it's of totally trial process. and error? Absolutely. I feel like in the wine world, there's always that mentor that has to pass on mm -hmm. that knowledge. For me, my mentor was Google. Google. All right, so there's, <laughs> there's your answer with that. For me, Halloween has always been my favorite holiday. People out there seem to love Halloween as well because as soon as these hit the shelves, they're gone. Right. And it makes my life very difficult to keep up with the demand, but I'm trying. <laughs> oh, well, let's talk about that because I, don't, I certainly don't want to forget this. For those who are watching, especially as soon as I post this video, for those who are wanting to shop for the Witch City Wicks Halloween collection for 2017, what's the story? The website seems to be sold out yeah. of, of a lot of items. We are not a big team here. It is literally has been for the past few years myself and then I brought a studio assistant on board. So it's been two people running the studio. Tell September 8th. September 8th. We are going to update the site. Yeah. You know, we did a initial release um, at the end of July, sold out immediately. So it, that goes to show me that the word is getting out. So I love everyone who's been patient. So the good news is folks are going to be able to yes. get their candles. If you still have to be, active you have to be you know you can't you can't wait until halloween i wouldn't um day you know you know we're gonna do our best to keep up with the demand and keep everything in stock but also october in salem is bananas yeah. i'm a little nervous about having a shop in salem in october yeah um keeping up with the demand so we are gonna do our best this candle right here is what really made me think I have to get to know this person. Even before you telling me the story of this candle, I was sensing a story. What What is the concept? We are blessed with having some of the oldest cemeteries in the country. It sounds a little macabre, but there is something magical about walking through old New England cemeteries, especially in the fall. There's just a feeling to it. You smell the damp earth, the leaves, the wetness evokes a a feeling in your head that's unlike anywhere else. So Holy Ground, I wanted something that had that earthy, wet earth, damp smell to it, but also would be enjoyable to, to burn. When you open it up and close your eyes, you get the wet dirt, the earth. And then when you burn it, yeah. you get not only the earthiness, but you get the sandalwood as well. So it's a very unique smelling candle. It is a favorite. I always kind of imagined that wooden box being, or that sandalwood being the coffin, the mm -hmm. vessel. Right. I mean, actually, when you said that, it just reminded me of back in the, the day when they were accidentally burying people yeah. alive in the coffins, and they, yeah. they actually installed a string with a bell uh, in case the, someone was alive what, down there. What is it called? A dead ringer. Dead ringer. Yeah. Never thought I would ever get to this point yeah. having this business. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked on everything right now, so. Well, it looks, <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how happy, genuinely happy I am for you. Thank you. Now, folks, if you are ever, ever in 
the Salem area, the North Shore, even if you're somewhere in Massachusetts, take the ride out. Not only is Salem a place that you have to visit at least once in your life, but you have to stop off here at Witch City Wicks, right on Essex Street. I mean, that's where all the action is happening. I'll have Liz and Witch City Wicks information uh, down below in the description. Come Reach on out, and say hi. Come in and say hi if you're in person or yeah. go on the Instagram, uh, say hello, tell her I sent you, share a little love. No purchase necessary, you come in, yeah. tell us where you saw us. We love this, we love those stories. And one day I'll convince her, I don't know how soon it's gonna be, but uh, to have Liz create a coffee table book with high, super high resolution, expanded large images of each and every one of her labels chronicling the history of Witch City Wicks. Liz, thank you so much. It's absolutely always a pleasure. If you don't mind, I would love to come back at a future time, Anytime. catch up, to be a part of the Witch City Wicks history and to see it grow no, I appreciate, every single year. I appreciate, um, not only your interest, but all of your audience's interest too. Uh, I've, they've reached out to me yeah. independent of, of your YouTube channel, um, just to email or follow on Instagram, and we certainly appreciate that, so. So folks, that is going to do it here in Salem, Massachusetts at Witch City Wix. I have plenty of other locations I'm gonna be stopping off on this road trip. Uh, so I will be seeing you folks soon, but until then, be good.